Well, hello there, how are you all doing? Reese here from the award-winning YouTube channel, Control Alt Reese. And um, yeah, it's been a while since I've uploaded something on Reese Rambles that wasn't a uh, an episode of the Reese Rambles podcast, if you're uh, not familiar with that. Um, quite a bit different to the other stuff that I do, but um, hey, it's there if you're interested in it. And now I've got the studio space, I wanna do, I wanna start doing quite a bit more on the second channel, because um, I can just hit record and, and just record whatever's on the desk, which is fantastic. Um, it's really gonna improve my uh, my productivity and my output. Um, I think, I hope, I don't wanna overpromise because I'll end up under-delivering, but um, yeah, I've just finished my review of the uh, 2600 Plus, just here, this beautiful thing uh, that's just been released by Atari, or at least the company currently calling itself Atari, as I say in the video. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm not sure if you've seen that already and, and that's why you're here, but um, yeah, I came to tidy up off the uh, off the back of that review. I, I left everything out because I have the, uh, the luxury of being able to do that now, uh, just in case I wanted to reshoot any bits or anything like that, and uh, or if I wanted to record a follow-up like this, I guess. And uh, I, I came to tidy up the uh, I came to tidy up the studio uh, and basically take all of this stuff home because all of the games and stuff that you saw, saw in that video uh, were from my personal collection and they actually live at home. Um, and it's, it's all just taking up space here, so I wanted to get it out of the way and do a, a general post-video tidy up. And I had a uh, I had a really interesting question from one of my supporters who goes by the name of DBK on my uh, Discord and everything else. So uh, shout out to you, DBK. Uh, thank you very much for the video suggestion. And it's something that really intrigued me as well, and something that I really wanted to include in that initial review. But I decided I kind of wanted to go for a bit more of a a bit more of a mainstream approach with that. Um, there's plenty of uh, nerdy channels like ours that have uh, obviously uh, taken these things apart and gone into all the technical details and stuff, but I, I kind of wanted to approach it as more of a, a kind of a, an, an addendum to the other reviews that were already out there and, and kind of covering some of the other uh, bits and bobs. Uh, as mentioned in that video, I won't, uh, I won't retread all of that, but um, what DBK uh, requested, and um, I'm sure I'm sure you probably know from the uh, the thumbnail and uh, the title um, is, is a bit of a teardown of this brand new stuff just to see what it looks like inside and kind of how it compares to the original. I mean, obviously, I'm not expecting the uh, console itself to uh, look anything like the original console. Uh, this is just a uh, knackered old parts console that I've got lying around, but um, most of its innards are intact. So it'd be interesting to see how they compare to that. Um, obviously, stuff like the light gun and the uh, the two button pad. I'm not going to bother taking those apart. They're just left over from the review. Incidentally, if you want to know how they work uh, with the new console, um, as well as CRT TVs and 7800 games and all that stuff, and you haven't seen that yet, I will put a link to that in the usual places. Uh, but I'm going to assume that you've come from that review and um, yeah, show you the uh, show you the guts of these things. So. I think what we'll do is we'll take a look inside the console itself, uh, see how that compares to the innards of the original console from 1977. I know this is a later one, you don't need to at me in the comments. Um, I've also got an original 1977 um, CX-10 joystick. Obviously people know the CX-40 as the Atari joystick, but this is the CX-10, which is the original one. I have uh, I've done a teardown of this on a previous video, but um, hey, let's take it apart and see how that compares to not only the uh, the the original CX40, that one. I'm getting these mixed up because they they do look uh, they do really look the part. Um, see how that compares internally to the original CX40, uh, but also the brand new ones, the CX40 Plus, which Atari have uh, released alongside this console. And of course, we've got the paddle controllers as well. And I can't remember what the CX part number is for those, but. Um, yeah, so we've got uh, an original set of paddle controllers here, uh, as well as the brand new ones uh, as shipped with the uh, 2600 Plus. So yeah, I'm going to go for a top-down shot uh, on the desk, just very straightforward, uh, live running commentary. And um, yeah, these are my thoughts on the innards of these uh, pieces of technology. Let's go. So let's start with the consoles themselves, and where better place to start than with, of course, the original here. I think this is a it's a six switch, so it's still a relatively early one, but it's uh, you know this is this kind of the original design. I do have the heavy six, so do you want to know the difference between the two? Let's have a look at the differences between the two, as I've got one here. So this is a light sixer. This is a slightly later model. Uh, this is a heavy sixer, and the main way that you can tell the difference, if you look at the front uh, bezels around the uh, the wooden area, uh, obviously the heavy sixer has this very thick uh, curved uh, front, and it doesn't overlap the uh, the wood grain part, uh, whereas the light sixer has a uh, more kind of angular. Sorry, I'm trying to see what's going on in the monitor here. Uh, has this more kind of angular focus, please, focus. As this more uh, kind of 
angular uh, front on it. And um, yeah, if we look at the uh, the new one, the 2600 plus, that's evidently based on the, uh, uh, not the light sixer, of course, the, the four switch, because it only has the four switches. And again, I don't have one of those, but uh, there we go. But anyway, that's the difference between the original 1977 model. These were all manufactured in uh, Sunnyvale, California, as the uh, sticker on the bottom will com confirm, uh, whereas these were mainly manufactured in Hong Kong. Uh, by Atari Wong Corporation, which uh, of course was a partnership between the Atari Corporation and the Wong Corporation. Uh, but I think that should be fairly obvious. But um, anyway, that's all by the by. That's that's your heavy sixer identification guide just there. Uh, you won't find PAL models of these. I think there are a few out there, but you, you know, if you do come across one of these in the wild with a nice thick curved front, um, it's more than likely to be an NTSC model. So as stated earlier, I think, depending on which edit of the uh, intro that I use, uh, this is a parts machine that I've had lying around for ages. Uh, it doesn't work. It's had a few bits robbed from it, but uh, let's take it apart. Usually you would remove um, six screws on the bottom to get into one of these, uh, but this doesn't have any screws in it because they've also been robbed for other projects. As you can see, this one dates to 1981, according to the sticker on the top. And we've got the uh, got the big old switch panel in here, and we've got oh wow, there's no screws in this at all. Naughty Reese should have at least put their screws back in. Goodness, well it does make my life a bit easier uh, for this bit anyway. So uh, yes, so let's pop this one open. And this is our original motherboard. Um, as you can see, there's wires hanging off it and all sorts. You're going to come out. Yep. Some of the original rubber, uh, well, I say rubber, they're like a, a foam material uh, bungs that go under the switches. And uh, yeah, this is our motherboard. Now, um, I've taken one of the chips out. I can't remember which chip this is. Um, I think it's the, is it this? No, it's not the C, that's the CPU. That's the TIA chip. That's the other chip. Um, I'll look it up and I'll put it up on screen. Can't remember the name of it, but. Um, yeah, um, I think that went to uh, Lee at least Smith's workshop, oddly enough, because he had one that he needed to repair. So, But anyway, you see what the motherboard looks like with the switch panel on here. Let's get all this other stuff out of the way and see how this compares to the 2600 Plus. So we'll pop this off to one side. And this is the brand new console. Now, I bought this for myself Apologies for all the dirt on the desk. Uh, I bought this for myself and I would quite like to enjoy it and uh, play with it um, for many years to come. So I'll try not to break it and uh, we'll see how far we can go before uh, we have to actually do some damage because I don't want to damage it. And like I say, it's my kind of uh, personal pride and joy, he says, scraping it all over the desk. Uh, the desk, of course, uh, was part of my sponsored video that I did recently. Um, part of my latest studio update, if you're interested in that. I won't link to it or mention the name because they've not paid me to do that in this video. And uh, I've been told off for being far too good to my sponsors in the past, although it, it is a wonderful desk. And being able to change the height as well for filming is just, it's a real game changer. It does make life so much easier uh, just for framing shots and things. So we've got the four screws in here. The original uh, was uh, six screws to take the lid off. And uh, these are very short self-tappers, I'm sure you can see. Not that that's particularly of interest. And we'll take the lid off. I've actually not, uh, I think Dan Wood took his apart in his review, but uh, apart from that, I've not seen the inside of one of these. Oh, come on. Like I said, I don't really want to break it. Right, there we go. So inside we've got this odd, we'll have a look at the bottom case moulding first. Got this odd arrangement here, which I guess is purely for strength. I mean, this is quite, this is a nice, thick, uh, chunky, substantial thing. It's not, I mean, it doesn't really flex at all. It's, uh, it, it's it, you know, it, even just the bottom shell on its own, it is quite nice and substantial. And you can feel that it's, um, you know, it's not cheap, nasty plastic, which is really nice. And a very pleasant surprise, actually. I wasn't expecting that. And uh, yeah, so once we get in here, uh, we can see, so we've got the LED in here, which illuminates that Atari logo on the front, which I'm sure you will have seen in the review. And let's just, uh, we'll get this first board off because this looks really interesting. This is the point where I break it horribly on camera. 
Still, it's all good for engagement. So this will be the brains of the operation, I guess. And um, yeah, actually, just a moment of silence. Oh, let's try not to bend all of the pins because they're quite fine. There we go. The pins have survived unscathed, fantastic. And this is actually, uh, the, the way it's constructed is quite similar to the original if you think about it, because we've got this, this board on the top, which has got the cartridge, or the cartridge slot is on the uh, motherboard on the original, but um, you've basically got the separate switchboard at the top, and then you've got the separate motherboard here, and <laughs> look at that compared to the original. Um, it's a lot more, uh, <laughs> it's what, it's about a third of the size. And what have we got on here? So we've got a Toshiba, uh, something that looks, I guess that's the RAM chip. And uh, we've got a Skylinks chip, and we've got a uh, Rock, Rock chip, which would be the SOC, uh, which is the brains of the operation. Um, there's a, oh, this is, this is very interesting. Let me show this to the camera if I can, uh, see if it will focus. Come on, you can do this. There we go. So this has a, it's got a recovery button on it, or a button labeled recovery. Uh, it has a uh, USB, that's micro USB connector on there, which obviously isn't usually accessible. So I guess that's what they use to program these boards in the factory. And we've got pin headers here, which I guess is for like a, a serial, like a JTAG type interface for programming. Um, but yeah, we've got we've got the rock chip uh, SOC there, which is obviously, uh, you know, your, your CPU and graphics, your GPU and everything else. Um, all quite neatly contained on this nice little board that just plugs into the uh, switchboard. So, um, yeah, that's quite an interesting thing, isn't it? Obviously, uh, definitely some potential there for flashing this, um, you know, for people to kind of hack it and get it running Doom and, uh, you know, for future firmware updates and stuff. So, um, yeah, that's the brains inside the 2600 Plus. Uh, let's, uh, let's move on to some controllers. Okay, so curiosity got the better of me here and I started taking some more screws out because I was really interested in these switches. Um, but I am, I'm not going to go any further because actually once you start to look at it, there are quite a lot of screws, obviously stuff attached to this front panel. Uh, and there's some quite, I don't know if you can get a good look at those, there's some quite fine looking uh, ribbon cables in there as well. And like I say, this is, this is my personal toy and it was quite expensive, so I don't want to destroy it, um, despite my, my apparent electronics credentials. But um, I wanted to just draw attention to these switches. Um, if you can just see the side of that there, um, that's one of the big slider switches uh, on the front. Let's just get a good, see if we can get a better angle on that. And that, that is very, very reminiscent of these original ones here. Perhaps not the wider ones here, but um, these original switches on the original board, um, they're basically constructed in the same way where you've got the, you've got the slider and you've got the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the plastic with the, uh, the spring contacts inside, I assume, um, they certainly look like, like exactly the same type of switch. And that would explain why they feel exactly the same uh, as, the original, as the original console switches. So um, it, would be, uh, it would be quite nice to tear it down to the point where I can get a closer look at those. But um, yeah, this is, uh, this is just supposed to be a very quick uh, look at this and I don't want to rush it and end up breaking anything. So there, yeah, really interesting touch there. Uh, and I also noticed when I was poking around this board that there are some, um, there are some more headers on here. I don't know if these are, um, you know, to do with programming or they look like they might be, um, you know, we've got RX, TX, uh, ground and five volt, which implies to me that that's a JTAG header for, uh, for programming. Um, I can't see any other sort of microcontrollers and stuff on here that might be handling the, the inputs. There's probably something on the other side of this board, but um, even having taken out the screws I've taken out, it's still quite firmly stuck. And this, I'm not sure if this cartridge port is actually um, glued somewhere maybe, or stuck on, but um, anyway, the point of this video was to have a look at the controllers, not this. Uh, this was just gonna be an aside, but uh, yeah, I thought that was quite interesting. Anyway, let's move on to the controllers. Right, so let's take a look at some joysticks. And what we have here are a bit of a selection. So these are the brand new ones. You can tell by the, uh, the labels on the bottom. They've got the modern FCC markings and stuff. Uh, that's an old one. 
Uh, what's this? This is another new one. These, by the way, genuinely do feel exactly the same, you know, weight-wise. I haven't, I haven't weighed them. I don't have scales here at the studio, but, um, you know, weight-wise and the type of plastic and the texture, and I don't know if they've used the original uh, injection molds maybe for these. I guess that's, I mean, there was all sorts of stuff uh, left lying around after Atari went bust, but, um, yeah, I mean, it, literally everything about them is just absolutely spot on. So I expect the internals will be identical as well because the new joysticks do work on the old original consoles. And uh, of course, the uh, the old joysticks do work on the new 2600 plus. So I think what we'll do, what I actually want to do is uh, take apart this one. So this is now the way you can spot one of these. Let's just talk about this. Um, originally, this would have had a, a hex disc in top of the in the top of the stick, which had an Atari logo in it. Um, this has actually been replaced. This is a modern um, like silicon um, boot. It's the only part of this that isn't original. Uh, but the way you can spot one of these is that it doesn't say top on the top, uh, whereas all of the uh, the CX40s do. So this is a CX10. And uh, yeah, you don't have this uh, this top marking. And I guess um, obviously people weren't really used to <laughs> games consoles and stuff back in 1977. And um, yeah, I suppose there was some confusion as to the correct way round to hold the stick. And these, I think, these were only sold with the with the original Heavy Sixer console that I showed you earlier for um, about a year, maybe even less than that. So um, yeah, it's quite a rare controller. He says, starting to take it apart in that ham-fisted way that he does. So um, yeah, just four screws in the bottom of one of these. I have, uh, like I mentioned before, I have done a, a bit of a teardown of one of these in a previous video. I can't remember which one that was, but um, it was fairly recent, I think. Uh, feel free to go looking for that. And if you're a super fan and know which video I'm talking about, uh, let me know down in the comments and um, you'll, you'll have won a cookie. So the CX-10, the reason it's got this lovely um, tactile feedback to it, and the reason it kind of feels as nice as it does, is it's got these springs. So it's got the, uh, you've got the plate here, which kind of activates these springs, which push down on the switches. I'm not gonna go any further than this, because this is quite fiddly when you take it apart. And uh, as you've just seen, I'm not great with fiddly things, but um, yeah, this is, you'll, you'll see the difference when we take apart the, uh, which one is it? The classic, uh, not that one, the uh, the classic, uh, this one, CX40, which came, like I say, after that first year of production, it was ever so slightly revised. I think it was to make it a bit cheaper to produce. Uh, you'll see that these are simpler inside. Um, and um, yeah, I think people were getting like hand cramps and stuff. A lot of people prefer the original CX10. I must admit I do too. Um, I think it's a great joystick, very noisy in use. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's a shame they kind of, uh, did the uh, the redesign uh, that they did when they did. So this is an Atari CX40 joystick that caused the iconic design classic. I think you, these are in like the Museum of Modern Art and uh, places like that. A very much a iconic piece of industrial design. So let's tear it apart. And uh, whoop, there we go. And you'll instantly see uh, that there's a spring that's come loose inside. Uh, so I'm going to have fun trying to get that back into position when I put this back together. But um, yeah, you'll instantly see that um, the, 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 uh, the, the cage part with the springs in is gone. Uh, so that's the difference between the CX-10 and the CX-40. Uh, this top part doesn't screw directly to the board. Um, is that right? Yes, that is right, because the screws pass straight through. Um, just double checking my work here because the, uh, the it looks like the, the actual top part of the stick is actually the same. I might tear another one of these down, you know, because um, just to make sure that I'm right about that. Um, this is a learning journey for all of us. Let me go and grab another CX40. So here's another one. As you can see, the bottom is identical to the one that I've just taken apart. But let's double check our work here. May as well, as I've got uh, plenty of joysticks that I can look at, and we'll just. Da, 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 da. I'll just take these uh, screws out, just talk amongst yourselves. I should probably edit this, shouldn't I? You're probably sitting there watching this thinking, why didn't Reese just edit this bit out? Why not just cut straight to the uh, the bit with the actual joystick open and, and save all of his viewers valuable time? Perhaps it's so he can squeeze some more adverts in, but um, this is the second channel. It's not monetized. It doesn't have adverts, or if it does, it's there's certainly nothing to do with me. But anyway, oh, look at that. It's always fun when they all come out at once. Aha! So, 
yeah, that's not actually screwed on. It's uh, it just kind of uh, clips onto these pegs. Uh, evidently that one, and the the tiny little spring is for the button. I don't know if you can see that, but the tiny little spring is just under there. So, actually, yes, that was right. Um, even though it does have, yeah. So the screws go straight through into that. And you've got this little, uh, may as well show you this one now in my hand, got this little spike on the bottom and that's what the uh, the bottom of the joystick itself kind of pivots on, uh, which is slightly different to the way that the original uh, CX-10 works. Um, yeah, it doesn't, uh, it does have the spike, which I guess is, I guess is to kind of hold it um, in place, but um, it doesn't actually pivot on that spike. It doesn't. It doesn't. It doesn't need it because it's got this top uh, mechanism that holds it all together. So um, anyway, that's the CX10 from 1977, the original, the OG, uh, and these are a couple of CX40s, which are the slightly later redesign. Got bits all over the place, and of course, the question that we're here to answer is how does the new one compare to all of these classic ones? So we have just here a couple of CX40 pluses as Atari are calling them. And uh, the first thing you'll see is that there aren't any screws exposed, and I'm guessing yeah, there's only one place they could have hidden them, under these feet. And uh, I'll have to find a way to stick these back on when I'm uh, I'm done tearing them down, because uh, this is my own personal console. But uh, I do these things in the name of science and for the benefit of my viewers. So let's just rip those off, be easy enough to stick those back on. Or maybe even buy some new ones. Oh, so we can see instantly that the screws are much, much smaller. That's very interesting. Tiny little uh, self-tapping screws we've got here, similar to the ones that held the uh, the lid on the console itself. Again, talk amongst yourselves. Come on. Come on. Fine. And uh, we'll just pop this lid off. Ah, goodness. Oh, so that's been completely redesigned. Okay, that's very interesting. So we'll just unplug this. It's got this nice little, uh, rather than those, uh, so let's grab one of these. So where is the original, or I say, let's refer to the CX40 as the original. Uh, the original CX40 had these uh, spade connectors that connected the individual wires to the, uh, the PCB tracks that went to the buttons. Um, which of course the contacts for the various different directions. Now I'm going to get all my bits mixed up. This one has a uh, has a plug, and um, yeah, look, we've got uh, <laughs> we've got a, a wiring diagram on here. Can you see that little wiring diagram printed on the bottom of the PCB? And uh, oh, I'm so intrigued by this. This is just too. You're a temptress, Atari. Thankfully, there's only two screws in here, and this is the part where a, a million tiny springs all ping out across the room, maybe. Let's see how this works internally. Oh, okay, so, um, yeah, okay. So the originals had, um, like, metal spring contacts where you've got two bits of metal that push together. Uh, this is just, I mean, this is old-school technology. This is obviously not as old-school as the original uh, joysticks were, but you've got your carbon, you know, pads here that uh, just press on that. So that's like a... <laughs> that looks like a part of a um, like a NES uh, D-pad on there, and those those just press against those and complete the circuit. Uh, they're quite rubbery, so yeah, I guess um, you wouldn't expect the joystick to feel. What have we got under here? Oh, that's exactly the same. You wouldn't expect the joystick to feel exactly the same as the original, um, considering it actually works in in quite a different way. But I guess obviously we've not got the um, we've not got the spike in the bottom here. That's interesting, the spikes on the bottom of the joystick part itself. But, um, okay, but uh, yeah, quite a uh, quite a sensible redesign, really. Oh, that's that's actually keyed so it goes in the right way around, that's nice to know. And uh, no spring to lose on that button either. But, of course, you can still lose the button itself. So we've had some paddles sat here on the side of the desk just out of shot. I don't know if they were just out of shot, I can't really see on the monitor, but uh, yeah, we've had some paddles sat here at the side of the desk, looking on nervously at the uh, the events that have been unfolding throughout the course of this video. Uh, I've got a bit of a joystick graveyard here, I've got to deal with those. I've got the 2600 plus, I kind of half put it back together and then realised that actually I think there's a specific order that things have to go in. So I'll, I'll sit down at the workbench and do that properly. Um, this is a teardown, not a, uh, not a put back together. But um, 
yeah, we've got some paddle controllers here. So we'll take a look at the originals. Uh, as per the originals, you've got two that plug into one port. So there are actually four player paddle games like uh, Warlords, I think is probably the best known great game. And um, if you've got two sets of paddles, you plug one into player one port, one into your player two port, and then you, you can play your, uh, your two player, four player, paddle games, but uh, as it stands, yeah, they're set up for two players. Because of course, when they were designing the 2600, um, you know, it, it was immediately off the back of the success of Pong, and they kind of thought, in, in fact, the way the graphics chip works and the way that it's all kind of programmed and stuff very much all kind of ties into that Pong way of thinking. And um, yeah, so they just thought, well, we'll, we'll ship it with two paddles because people are going to want to play Pong games on it. And um, yeah, that's, that's why they kind of tied together and why, why they both uh, plug into the same, uh, the same connector. But um, I should have been explaining this while I was actually tearing them down, shouldn't I? But um, these are held together with two screws on the bottom. Uh, again, these are the originals. Uh, I'm not quite sure what uh, vintage these particular ones are, but I don't suppose it matters. I'm not sure if, I don't think there were different uh, revisions of these. And these are very simple inside. In fact, that one's broken. That's a shame. Uh, that's probably, I think this is the one that fell off my shelf a few months ago and uh, made an almighty bang, but I thought was okay. But, um, oh well, while it's apart, we can, uh, we can glue that back together. But uh, yeah, we've got the one big switch here and that's just your standard momentary switch. And um, yeah, we have a big potentiometer here and that just turns as you turn the knob. And uh, as I explained in my 2600 plus review, uh, these old potentiometers get really uh, dirty and disgusting internally and it makes them kind of jumpy and jittery and whoop, and um, they don't track smoothly so if you're playing breakout and the paddle at the bottom will just be like jumping around randomly and that means that this needs cleaning with some contact cleaner. Uh, shout out to Dave. Um, so yeah that's what that's what one of the originals looks like inside, it's very exciting. So let's take one of these. We'll do a side-by-side -side comparison here. This is all, this is all becoming a, a bit of a mess, but um, okay, that's interesting. So that actually, uh, the screws are they? They're in the exact same places. Isn't that weird? Uh, actually, let's use this broken bottom to compare. Um, yeah. So the screws are actually identical, unlike the joystick, which was. Uh, kind of slightly modified from the original design with the feet and stuff. A very, very sensible decision on Atari's part, actually, to put the feet uh, kind of over the screws, just keep things looking nice and tidy. It discourages people from trying to uh, take them apart. Let's just do this and uh, evidently, uh, oh, oh, oh. Is that, okay, so that's, that's interesting. So even though the screws are in the same place, that's not the same molding. Um, the newer one has been reinforced with uh, a bit of extra moulding here behind the switch, which is nice, uh, which the original didn't have. Uh, other than that, it's uh, pretty much identical, I think. Obviously, the original's got the Atari C number. Everything Atari ever made had one of these uh, numbers starting with a C as like an internal identifier. Uh, it would have been really nice to see those in the, uh, in the new versions as well, I guess, as, as a bit of a throwback for the very few sad nerds that would know that. But um, that's... Uh, that. Uh, the switch looks very similar. Um, this one has a big spring on it, this one doesn't. Uh, there's no, uh, of course that doesn't mean that uh, it didn't have at some point. Uh, that's, that's, that's quite springy on its own, so it wouldn't need a spring. Um, and this isn't. So yeah, they've used a slightly different style, style of switch, and the potentiometer itself is of course a tiny little uh, modern equivalent. I don't know if these knobs... That doesn't feel like it wants to pull off, so I won't, uh, I won't force it. So yeah, just a modern uh, sort of surface mount type thing, I guess, uh, which I suppose is to be expected. But uh, other than that, the actual case moulding and stuff is, is very similar to the original. So interesting stuff. Uh, let's go back to the wide shot and do a bit of a, uh, a bit of an outro, I guess. So there we go. Thank you ever so much to uh, DBK for the suggestion of doing the teardown. That was actually quite uh, quite educational, I think. Very interesting to see what the insides of all of these uh, various bits and bobs look like. Um, obviously, I've got quite a task ahead of me now trying to work out how to put all of this stuff back together, uh, particularly the 2600 Plus itself. I've kind of partially reassembled some of the boards and stuff, so hopefully that'll go back together. But um, uh, as for my picture that was on the wall behind me, that was my old band, Titan, by the way. Um, that's me playing the bass. 
a bit of insider information. I did talk about that in this week's ramble, if you're interested in that. Um, that just fell off the wall the other day. I came in and it was freezing cold in here and that had fallen off the wall and the uh, the command strips seem to have just completely lost their stick, which is quite worrying because I've stuck some other stuff up around the, uh, around the studio. Uh, using those, including a whiteboard, so I'm kind of expecting that to fall off at some point as well. And speaking of speaking of heating and stuff, the aircon was was blowing out lovely hot air until a minute ago, and now it's making this weird clicking noise, and it's gone very cold in here. But anyway, yes, I've got this big task ahead of me, trying to put all this stuff back together. Um, and then, of course, I've got to work quickly edit this video up and get it uploaded because it will take forever if I uploaded it from home. So thank you ever so much for watching Reese Rambles, the second channel of Control Alt Reese. Uh, Reese Rambles is officially back. I'm going to be doing companion videos, much like this one, to go along with um, you know the videos on the main channel. And these are probably going to be based on su suggestions from uh, commenters and supporters and, and anyone else, really. So if you have any ideas for stuff uh, that you want me to kind of do as a, a quick second channel video, a bit of an unscripted ramble, I am all ears. So let me know. And uh, yeah, thank you very much once more, and I will see you next time.